Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to explain how to create a starry schema using the ERD plus. Uh, before going to the ERD plus, let's see what uh, the star schema is. So the star schema is a type of a data modeling technique that we can use for multidimensional data modeling, uh, for example, to develop a data warehouse. And each star schema has three main components uh, that are facts or fact tables, dimension tables, and then attributes. Uh, so what is a fact table? A fact table is actually containing the measures that are related to the subject of our analysis, which are usually numeric. For example, if the subject of our analysis is sale, one of the measures in the fact table can be the sales dollar amount. And um, the dimension tables are actually those tables that provide uh, usually descriptive information that can actually provide a basis for uh, the analysis of our subject. Uh, for example, back to the back to our example, uh, if the subject of analysis is sale, and then we said one measure in the fact table can be the sales dollar amount, and then the sale amount can be calculated using different functions across various dimension columns. For example, a total and average sale can be measured per product brand, per customer gender, and uh, uh, for many other uh, many other dimension attributes and uh, the attributes are the same concept as what we had in the uh, relational databases so they actually provide uh, additional information to uh, to the dimension for example if one of our dimension is product then the attributes could be product ID product name price, etc. Or if the dimension is a uh, customer, then uh, the attributes could be customer ID, customer name, or address, and other information about the customer. So we basically provide further information about that, uh, that dimension. And uh, when, we are, when we want to design a star schema, uh, we have to ask two questions. So these two questions can help you identify which dimension to use in your star schema. With respect to the fact table, uh, it's quite easy because it's the fact table is the subject of our analysis. So in our example, if the sale is the subject of analysis, then uh, our fact table is sale. But uh, deciding on which tables we can use as our dimension tables, uh, we can ask these two questions. And if the answer to these two questions is yes, then we can use those dimensions. First of all, we have to see whether the dimension table can be useful for the analysis of the chosen subject. And second, we have to see whether that dimension table can be created based on the existing data sources. Now, let's see what uh, a star schema look like. So the, uh, a typical star schema look like this. So we usually have a fact table uh, in the center, which is connected through the foreign keys to the dimension tables and uh, we can also have like more than fact tables but uh, in this video I'm just going to focus on a very simple star schema with only one fact table so this is just a, a sample of star schema for for the sale and these are a few dimensions such as location time product and person or customer that can be useful for uh, analyzing sale um, now let's go to the example of the Zagi uh, DB uh, that we have in our textbook. We are going to create a star schema for this example. Uh, I put the ER diagram and also relational schema here so that uh, we can better explain and understand how to, uh, how to create the star schema. So this is the ER diagram and here is the relational schema. And here we have all the tables that are populated with the data. So in order to uh, create a star schema, which we can see the star schema here, in order to create this, first of all, we have to see what is the subject of our analysis. So in this example, let's, for example, uh, suppose that the Zagi company decide to uh, use dimensional modeling to design a data warehouse uh, with the subject of analysis as sale. 
and then we want to, for example, uh, measure sale per product, customer, store, and date. Therefore, we have these four dimensions, product, customer, store, and calendar. For each of these di dimensions, the answer to those two questions were yes. That is, for example, for the product dimension, we have to ask whether it is useful for the analysis, which is yes, whether we can create it based on the data sources that we have, back to the data sources that we have here, the company sale department database, we can see that we have the product table and product information. Therefore, we can also create the product dimension. And this is the same for other uh, dimensions, such as customer store. You may ask that we, have, uh, we don't have the calendar table in the relational schema. So how could we create the calendar dimension here? Um, the answer is because if you see the relational schema, here we have the sale transaction table which contains the transaction date. Having the transaction date, we can actually use uh, some SQL functions to extract uh, other information such as, for example, quarter, day of the month or uh, day of the week, uh, which you can see here. So all these columns can be extracted having the, uh, having the transaction date or t-date in the sale transaction table and uh, here i would like to explain a few things uh, first of all uh, when we want to create the uh, star schema for the fact table you don't need to add the foreign keys that you see here so each uh, each fact table contain the measures of our analysis and foreign keys uh, so it contains foreign keys because all the dimension tables are linked or connected to the fact table. And this connection is through the foreign keys. So for example, the uh, product key, which is the primary key in the product dimension, when it is connected to the sales fact table, it is added as a foreign key to the sales fact table. This is the same for all other dimensions. For example, customer key is added as a foreign key to the sales fact table. A store key is going to be added as a foreign key and also calendar key. These four key that we have in the dimension tables, calendar key, product key, customer key, and store key are called surrogate keys. So surrogate keys are um, similar to primary keys. They are unique identifiers for each dimension and uh, they are system generated auto incremented, uh, usually integer numbers uh, just to make sure that we have uh, we have unique uh, identifier for each uh, for each dimension another point i wanted to mention here is uh, you may notice that we have some uh, attributes in some of the dimension that may not exist in the relational schema for example in the product dimension we have product vendor name and product category name which do not exist in the relational uh, in the product table in the relational schema um, for example, here you see we only have vendor ID and category ID, but we don't have the names. Um, the reason that we added name here is that, for example, we may want to measure sale for each vendor uh, or category. For example, here we have vendors uh, Mountain King and Pacifica Gear. We may want to see the sale, for example, measure the sale for the Mountain King vendor. Or, for example, we may want to measure the sale for the Camping uh, category and uh, therefore we can join uh, we can join the product table with vendor and category tables to add the vendor name and category name to the product dimension so the product dimension that we see in the star schema is actually the result of the join between the product table and the vendor and category tables the same is uh, with uh, some other dimensions, for example, the store dimension is the result of the join between the store table in the relational schema and the region. Uh, this is also because we may want to see, for example, the sale for each region. For example, we have the Chicago land. Maybe we want to see the sale, sale uh, in Chicago land. And that is why we can join these two tables to add the store region name to the store dimension. With respect to the uh, calendar dimension. The reason we actually have the date is that the 
Date-related analysis is one of the most common type of subject analysis. For example, analyzing sales across months or across quarters of the year. And almost every star schema has a dimension, uh, including the date information. And uh, now let's go to the ERD plus to create our star schema. I'm going to start it from the beginning with you to show how to create. Uh, so here I would uh, suggest you to uh, create an account in the ERD plus so that you can later you can save uh, whatever diagram that you create and it's free so you can uh, create the account uh, for free. Now you can go to your documents after you created your account, click on new diagram and you select a name for your diagram, for example, uh, Zaki uh, star schema uh, example and then you have to choose the type, for example, we have ER diagram, relational schema, but now we want to create a star schema, so I select the star schema, click create, and then you just have to find it here. Now, uh, what I want to do here is basically use the ERD plus to create the a star schema that we have here. So first of all, I'm going to click fact to add the fact table. So we have the sales fact table. In the fact table, we only have to add the measure of our analysis, which are dollars sold and units sold, which refer to the amount of uh, sale and also number of products sold. We don't need to add these foreign keys because they will be automatically added when we link the dimensions uh, to the fact table later. I will show it uh, in a few minutes. Now we have the sale table here. We have to add the column. Uh, just I'm going to add dollars sold and another column unit sold. Now if you see we also have a data type column here so you can identify the data type. For example dollars sold might be float number so I'm going to use numeric data type and for the number of items sold that will be integer. And then for adding the dimension, you just click dimension and adding it here. For example, I'm going to add dimension product here. You write the name of the dimension table here. And then you, for each dimension table, you have to add the surrogate key. So you can just add a column with column name and key, product key, for example, and uh, this is usually an integer number and uh, I'm going to select it as the primary key. So click on primary key here and then you have to select this product key and click save. Now you can see that it is underlined which means that it is a surrogate key or unique identifier for the product dimension. I'm going to quickly add other columns here. So product ID which is integer product name which can be also characters so I use varchar because the, the, that can uh, include like variable number of characters and then product price which is which can be numeric and uh, we have product vendor name and category names so I'm going to also add product vendor name and product category name also selecting it. So I'm, I'm done with the uh, product dimension. Now you're going to add another dimension which is the customer dimension. So here again I'm going to add the customer key which is the primary key or surrogate key here. Select it, click save, and then it is underlined, which means that it is identified as the surrogate key or primary key. Then adding the other columns quickly here, customer ID, for example, integer, customer name, and uh, this is our char. And then adding, I think customer, is it other 
and then that is also integer. Uh, the other dimension that we have to add is the calendar dimension. And uh, so the column calendar key, which is the primary key. So we select it, click save, and then quickly adding other columns that we need in the calendar. So here, uh, I would like to also mention that even though we didn't have the calendar uh, table in our relational schema, so if I go back to the relational schema, in our example, you can see that, for example, we had the product table, we had customer table uh, or a store, but we didn't have calendar, but we have the transaction date. And as I mentioned before, having the transaction date, we can actually uh, extract using the SQL functions. We can extract uh, other information such as, uh, for example, full date, day of week, day of month, etc. So I'm going to also add these columns. Add full date, which is a date data type. And I'm going to add also day of week. So day of week is also character, adding day of month, which is integer, and then adding quarter, oh, sorry, month, quarter, and then year month which is character or a bar chart uh, we can select either and then adding quarter which can be q1 q2 q3 q4 which means that we can use char and uh, at this n can be the length of the characters and then we have the year which can be also integer so we have also created the calendar dimension with the with its uh, surrogate key or unique identifier and all the columns that we need. Now the last dimension is going to be the store dimension. So I'm going to quickly add the store key, which is the primary key, select it, save, and then quickly adding other columns such as store ID and And the last column was a store region name, which was the result of the join between the store table and region table. Because we also want to see the sale for um, like each region. And now we are done with the creating the tables, uh, fact table and also dimension tables. Now we just have to uh, connect all the dimension tables to the fact table. For example, here to connect the product dimension to sale, click connect and then click on product and drag it to the sale fact table. And then you can see that the product key, which was the primary key or surrogate key in the product dimension is added to the sale fact table. So I'm going to add also calendar here. So calendar key is also added. Now if I uh, if I connect the store, now I would expect that the store key also going to be added to the sale fact table. And now I'm going to expect that the customer key is going to be added. And this is how we create a star schema using Yardi Plus. Hope this video was helpful for you and thank you for watching.